Native Cooper Show. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Platinum Planet Records, for that wonderful intro. I am forever thankful to you. I have such a wonderful guest on tonight. I cannot wait to get to her. But up first, I would love to talk about our brand new sponsor for the month of June. Now, I know it's not June yet, right? But in season one, I had the absolute honor of being able to interview the maker, the creator of Native Organics. Native Organics is one of uh, a very different sponsor that I have here on the show because it doesn't involve caffeine whatsoever, but it does involve wellness and natural health benefits and all vegan item, which is quite interesting. And I'd love for everybody to go over to YouTube and check out that season one interview with Judith Rigaud, from Native Organics. She's really, really gave me a great moment. I think we were together for about 45 minutes talking about these supplements. So Native Organics, you can go to nativeorganics.com for some really great products. Let me show you a couple of them. This one is Joint Works and Acid Tamer. Now Acid Tamer, I have tried a couple of times and it really works wonderfully. You know, and maybe you indulge a little bit at night and you eat something a little bit fatty, like a great steak, or I love Ted's. I'll go over to Ted's for a bison steak any day. And then you go home and you know, that's kind of like settling a little bit. This Acid Tamer is wonderful. And this is coming from somebody who's had five babies. So I should own stock in Tums right? We all know what that's like. It's very unpleasant. And this one, it just takes care of it for you all day long. Joint Works has wonderful amount of calcium. It has so many great elements in these custom made supplements. And turmeric. So turmeric is, is wonderful anti-inflammatory. So especially for people with lupus, a lot of autoimmune disorders, turmeric is something that you absolutely have. This is a wonderful supplement that in season one, she had mood bliss. Mood bliss, if you have those teenagers around, this is a great female supplement to be able to balance them out all natural. It is made in USA. There are no fillers, no GMOs, no soy whatsoever, fully organic, natural supplements. If you join now, you have the option of being able to grab yourself 5% off when joining the club and you will be able to have access to healthy living tips, discount codes, and more. So go to nativeorganics.com today and get yourself some wonderful supplements. All right, so let's get back to the show. I cannot wait to bring up a beautiful actress, She's a model, she's an entrepreneur, she is a mother, she has a marketing firm. She like, it just, I don't know when she sleeps and that's not in my list of questioning. So that's just gonna be a forever wondered question. But Nefertiri Plessy is going to be joining us tonight. So Nefertiri is an actor, she's a model, she's a Playboy Playmate, entrepreneur and founder of marketing firm called elevated strategist. She is also the founder of Single Moms Planet. That is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting single mothers and their children. The organization hosts the Single Mom Awards each year. Now, however, they were not able to perform those awards and the banquet last year nor this year, but big plans are in the works and we're going to find out more about that. Single Moms Planet can be found at www single moms with an s planet.org it provides assistance you won't believe this listen to this listing it provides assistance to single mothers such as parenting classes financial education classes medical referrals yoga classes play dates for children summer camps for children job referrals housing assistance and more so without any further ado i would love to welcome to the stream tonight Nefertiri Plessy. Here she comes. Good evening, Nefertiri. How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. You are so 
dynamic. And as I had mentioned, you're a mother, you're, you work at, I mean, many different things, right? I just, I don't see how you do it all. But the one thing I really want to focus on first, if we may, is Single Moms Planet. Can you tell me a little bit of the backstory? How did that conception come about? Oh, wow. So Single Moms Planet is my 501c3 nonprofit. I was raised by a single mom, actually. And my mother was the the original inspiration behind Single Moms Planet. Uh, I got married, personally, I got married, then I got divorced. We have two kids together and we do co-parent. And that was the first time I got to experience what it was like to not be able to take a shower and try to keep my kids alive at the same time. So it was really birthed out of a need of like, how do you do this? How do you go from marriage to co-parenting when you all are not in the same household? Or how do you you know, do it completely by yourself as a mom and not really, sometimes I have the resources or someone to tell you, you know, what to do to get from A to Z and right. not have to spend too many years trying to figure it out. So that was originally how Single Moms Planet was uh, created. So, you know, when you think about single moms just as a whole, there's so much need within that group of single mothers. Mm -hmm. Some single mothers, such as myself and yourself at periods of time in my life, I have been able to co-parent with my exes. And it has been absolutely wonderful to be able to keep that connectivity and that fiber of the family together. But there are so many women out there that have zero help and very little resources. So why don't you think that maybe there should be more um, 501c3s dedicated to this effort? Definitely, you know, what we noticed when I was doing research about, you know, should I start a nonprofit targeting single mothers only, was that a lot of organizations, they do tap into the single mother demographic but they're only doing it as a cohort of what they do for families, right? It's not a targeted niche. And so, you know, I think that there's still this, um, almost like this, this, uh, this arena of people who really don't understand, like there's so many women doing this alone and it's not really being addressed on a really national level, really having support that's consistent and that's really targeted and based around this topic and not being about anything else, but how do we support the single mother community? How do we meet them where they are? And how do we really meet every genre of single mom? So uh, there's so many ways that a woman becomes a single mother. She could be through divorce, in vitro, uh, adoption. Um, her, her, her spouse or her partner could have actually have passed away, right? So you have so many different facets of how a woman becomes a single mother that I think that a lot of the times people don't recognize it. Even military moms, we have quite a few women in our organization who are military mothers where they're giving birth in the hospital for the first time and their spouse is gone for two years at a time, right? So they're, they're by themselves. So there may be even that experience of a mother having that as a part of her life for a short, a short window of time, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't need the resources. It doesn't mean that she doesn't need the community to, su to support her. You know, so that is a wide variety of people out there, you know, single mothers, you know, all females, hopefully a majority of us are all reproductive. So that is everybody, right? And especially mm -hmm. in talking about the military. So what type of services, how, how did you get the focus to be able to figure out, okay, these are the services we're going to stick with and perfect? We really went into the community and asked, you know, so initially the first event that we did was a single mom's brunch. So it was a luncheon. We had a hundred women that showed up. We also had their kids were invited as well. So any child five plus we had child care. And then we also provided resources for teenagers. So they had their own event inside of our event. Um, and from there, we were able to poll the community to find out you know, what did they respond to? What did they seem to like? Where did it seem like there was a lack of knowledge? And how can we really step in and make a transformational difference, right? Not just a Band-Aid, not just listening to stories, but actually causing transformation in the community of single motherhood and creating a voice for the single mother that was in a position of power, right? So 
for me growing up watching my mother raise me as a single mother she was from a, from a position of power she was from a position of educating herself investing in herself self-care going on vacations together so when i became a single mom and a co-parenting single mom i noticed that I was embarrassed to even say that I was divorced. You know, I didn't take my ring off for almost two years and I didn't even share it with my family because I didn't, I couldn't understand how to, how it, how it became a part of my own story. And then the conversations around divorcees and single mothers, it really wasn't a empowerment conversation. And I started saying, wait a minute, I want to shift the narrative. And that was really why single moms planet has the tone that it has right so that's why we go into the financial literacy that's one of our number one pillars for our organization we are an organization of education we don't give a handout we give a hand up right and so no matter what economic state a woman is in if she doesn't know how to have the money mean value into her life how to invest her money and how to make her money work for her and how to build legacy well, then she's going to be in that rat race like a lot of a lot of us are right so we really wanted to create those conversations give those resources and have women that are self-made millionaires uh, self-made millionaires self-made billionaires being a part of our community that are from a single mother background who literally did it from the ground up by themselves you know no inheritance uh, no one giving them a handout or no one saying hey you know here's a hundred thousand dollars let me see what you can do Right. And so we we lead by example in Single Moms Planet. I, I'm just I'm dumbfounded by what you've put together. The, this is a huge just pillar in the community to be able to offer what you offer. And I have a two part question. Um, you know, as you said, you don't give a hand out. You give a hand up. So do you also notice that a lot of the women who do find success within your services are, are they helping to then pay it forward within the program? Do they become supporters of the program? Absolutely. So a lot of the women that go through our program, a lot of them actually have become, they've gotten remarried or they've gotten married for the first time. Uh, they relocate to new areas and they find new jobs or they start companies. They even start companies together. They buy real estate. Um, and they also give the women that are, you know, just coming into the program or needing a little bit more support. They've even employed them in certain circumstances or even created mentorship opportunity for women uh, such as Pia Gladys Perret. She's one of our members of Single Miles Planet. Now she's one of our board members and she's actually taken on quite a few women in the organization underneath her wing because she's a fashion designer and she has a global brand. Right. And so she's able to educate women beyond maybe the things that I know. Right. And so we're always pulling in women that know different, beautiful arenas of life. I mean, even from Regan Jane, she's a TV host for HGTV. She's a single mom. She co-parents with the father. And, um, you know, she's a, a luxury interior designer. She builds, mm -hmm. you know, full blown multi million dollar, 30 million dollar plus houses for people. And she's able to work with other women that are single mothers or mothers in general and just say, hey, if I can do it, you can do it, too. Oh, I love that. So how can someone like myself support you? How can we get involved? So we are a 501c3 nonprofit. You don't have to be a single mom to get involved with Single Moms Planet. You know, if you have a heart for family and a heart for community, and you like to volunteer, we definitely love volunteers. A lot of what we've been doing currently is online because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. but we also have opportunity for uh, mentorship. We also are always accepting and appreciate donations and any donation amount really does go a long way. So for donations, they can find a spot over at singlemomsplanet.org, which is up on the yes. screen right now. If anybody would like to jot that down or go to it right now, please do. Where can they find the avenue within your website to be able to donate? If you go to singlemomsplanet.com, .org, well, dot .com does it too, but if you go to singlemomsplanet.org, you will actually see the donate button. It's very visible. So we okay. made it pretty easy for people to donate. And when you go there, you can actually choose the category in which you want to donate to, right? So you can donate to our financial literacy program. You can donate to our child care program. 
Um, a lot of the time, single moms are at a lack because they don't, they can't afford uh, the, the proper child care for their children. And so we help fill that gap for working mothers or mothers that are actually going to school as well. So there's categories in which you can donate. I'm so glad that you mentioned about the children because you not only have programs and services for the mothers, but you know, in what I was reading to introduce you, I mean, goodness, it mentioned summer camps, it mentioned children's classes. What are some of the things that you do for or provide for the children of single mothers? So for the children, we actually have quite a few camps. One of our biggest camps is our financial literacy camp that we do for kids. So we typically will take the kids that are around, I would say uh, 10 plus that will participate in that. We also do a summer camp and we do that in partnership with the Boy Scouts of America. And then we also do a tennis camp and we do that with UCLA. Oh, that is awesome. So mm -hmm. is that all in person or is some of that online right now? So this is all in person. We, the financial literacy, we do, we do those classes online currently. But okay. when we go into our camping trips and our tennis camps, those are all done in person. Yeah. So unfortunately, over the last for last year, we didn't do it. We're actually looking at doing the camping trip and the tennis camp. We're actually looking at doing that this year. But we're just being cautious because we don't want any, you know, any issues. We want to make sure that everyone's safe. So as far as the moms that come seeking help within your organization, is there a, um, how can I say this the best way? Is there like a postulate? Is there a formula for who would fit best for uh, help that the organization provides and who maybe it doesn't? Like, do they need financial assistance? Do they need education? Do they have to be legally divorced? How does that work? So when it comes to single moms in general, um, we never tell a mother if she's a single mother or if she's not, that's for her to decide if she, we have married women that identify as single mothers and they participate in our organization. So there, you know, there's no qualifier in terms of the vernacular around it, or if we believe she is or not, um, because we're a community organization. So, you know, some women may be coming in wanting resources, but a lot of the women also come in uh, wanting to, to just be a part of the community. So it's a, it's a beautiful community, a lot of progressive women. I would say that this is an organization, we don't have housing, um, we don't have any of that. If, you're, if you wanna up level your life and you're a single mother or you're a mother or a woman in general, um, come, to, come and hang out with Single Moms Planet, right? So we're all about connecting, building businesses. We have an investment club where we actually have invested in restaurants together, um, things of that nature. So this is a progressive organization. Um, you know, if you're looking to get mentored by another woman that's making it happen, then come on aboard. Um, if you're looking for kind of like a pity party or somewhere where you can, you know, continuously share the sorrows of your life, that's not what we are. We're not a counseling service. You know, we're not, we're not you know, psychiatrists or anything like that. Um, my background is in business, marketing, PR, branding, um, you know, creating companies and businesses, helping women. We have quite a few women in our program that have uh, that I coach as well that are that have gone from zero to six figures within, you know, five to six months of working with us. And wow. so if you're looking to do something like that, that's what Single Moms Planet is about. Um, and, and at the same time, we have helped women such as, you know, if they're homeless and they're, you know, in the hospital, we've had those phone calls, you know, they're giving birth, they don't have anywhere to go. And we will figure out a way to get her resources. So we are a resource center in the form of, we may not provide the housing, but we will help you find those resources if that's where you are in your life. But if you really want to take advantage of what we have to offer, it's, it's going to be you getting out of your own way a lot of times. It's going to be you being coachable. It's going to be you saying, I want my life to look different and I'm here to do something about it. 
So you have an award ceremony that you conduct through Single Moms Planet. But before we get there, I know you're based in Los Angeles, California. Is your organization focused on the greater Los Angeles area? And if so, do you have any plans of taking it national? So we are, we are actually a national nonprofit organization. Our hub is in Santa Monica. And we have moms that are also um, outside of US. So we have some global membership as well. We have 10,000 women that are part of our organization nationally. And, you know, we don't really necessarily have like um, cohorts or like different groups. You know, like it wouldn't be different. We're not, we're not a chapter organization, we're more of a national community based organization. So, where we do most of our correspondence would be inside of our, we have a private community that you can actually register for on our website. And then we give you access inside of that private community where we may have, um, you know, different resources, different support that's there. Um, and then if you're looking for, you know, conversation around how to start your own single mom club or single mom community, we definitely do help moms do that as well. We actually have a few that have gone off and branched and done that. That That is just, it's just mind blowing. I do have another question before we get on to the awards. We do have a couple of people watching. We have Don Hooksama, he has a question here. He said, if earning a degree is key to getting single mothers and their families out of poverty, why is it so difficult for them to attend college? If earning a degree, so who said that? Who said that? Earn, what is, what, I'm not sure. So if this, earning, is, this is a viewer. So this yeah. is just a viewer question. He's saying mm -hmm. if earning a degree is key to getting single mothers and their family out of poverty, why is it so difficult for them to attend college? Personally, I would think the answer would be if you don't have any resources and you don't have any help from a spouse, it is awfully darn hard to try to attend college if you don't know how to organize yourself to be able to figure out where to get um, assistance to then attend college, right? I mean, yeah, so college, I think, is a great way to educate yourself. But I think college is typically for those who are looking to have an employment situation, mm -hmm. right? So we do have moms in our organization that do seek employment and they do want to up level you know, at which rate they can become employed and, and earn a better a better living. Mm -hmm. In our organization, we are more so about entrepreneurship and making your own way and making your own hours, Main, mainly because if you're a single mom, right, if you're working nine to five, five days a week, you know, you're pretty much paying someone else to raise your child and they're not getting that dual parent household a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And so we do want to help single moms figure out a way to have that freedom maybe they have a part-time job and then they're also able to create their own economic, you know, their own income is within the household. But the education thing, you know, I'm not college educated. Um, I went to school for computer science right out of high school. I did that for probably about a semester. And then I went off and started modeling in the entertainment business. And so I have very little college education, everything that I know and everything that I've created through the grace of God, of course, but it was really boots on the ground. You know, I'm coachable and I absorb information and I'm a, per I'm a person that gets the job done. And mm -hmm. so those are the things that we really focus on. But if someone, you know, we do have women that go off and they have their PhDs and they have their masters, um, but that's not necessarily the agenda that we have with Single Moms Planet. We're more so a financial education foundational uh, community mixed in with bi business and entrepreneurship. I'm right there with you. I think that paints a beautiful picture. And I'm glad that he asked that question because you shine such a huge light on the entirety of the situation. And, and I agree with you. You know, I did not have children at the time that I was attending college, but I chose a triple major and then wound up having to pay for it on my own. So I had three jobs trying to attend a full load. That doesn't work, but it's hard to tell <laughs> a seven-year-old that that doesn't work. So, you know, I never finished either but I am a co-owner in several different companies. Right. So 
I agree with you. I think it does come down to personality, teachability, um, how well you work with other people, how well you can pick up. You can, um, empath isn't exactly the right word, but you can, you know, you can uh, read people, I suppose. So I do have another viewer here and he has some very kind words for you. He said, she definitely earned a hug for such great work. Love to hear stories like this. And this is from Cyrus Alderwood. Guys, thank you so much for watching the show. So thank let's you. go ahead and move into, actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me pause myself for a moment because everything that you're describing to set up an organization like this normally takes people decades. <laughs> you are still very young, very beautiful, um, which shows how young you are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that you have spent decades and decades of building this. But when did you begin the footwork in this organization, in building it? We began seven years ago now. So we've been around for seven years. And really, the bulk of our work was, it's, it's about five years of work, right, that we really put into building the organization. Now, granted, I do... I would say I empower myself with having a really robust network and I know how to, you know, influence people. I know how to really nurture the relationships that I have and I cherish the people that make an impact in my life. Right. Um, also, running a nonprofit organization is about fundraising. So when you are going into that mind frame, you know, definitely being able to fundraise, make a cause for why you're doing what you're doing and why someone should cut a check and donate to your cause is really important. You know, nonprofit work is done with donations and nonprofit work is done with volunteers. So you really do need both. Um, and then also, you know, getting the community around you and creating that big picture concept is key. It's almost like, you know, really, it's like ha start having a, a startup. Yeah. You know, our nonprofit was a startup when we we're still, you know, we, we I know that we get that question quite a bit. We actually just partnered with a company called Free People, which is a clothing line. And they just uh, did a grant with Single Moms Planet. And that was the, the first question they said, how did you do this so fast? How did you, you know, really build such a beautiful brand? Um, Kind of, I mean, really, I always tell people we created Single Moms Planet with like bubble gum and matchsticks or something, you know, <laughs> you, st you strike the wrong way, it might blow up. You know, it was like, you know, it was one of those things where it's just like a, a moving mechanism. And sometimes I didn't get it right. You know, sometimes I didn't get it right. But the one thing that I always did was I, re I would always say, this is for the people. This organization is not for me. I would always go back to the people. What do you need from me? What do you need from the organization? You know, how how can we step in and fill the gap? What are the conversations that you want to have that maybe are over my head? Because I have a ha I have a healthy, happy co-parenting relationship with my ex-husband. A lot of people don't. We talk every day about our boys. A lot of people don't. My mom lives with me and she's a big support. And the reason I'm able to do all of this is because I have a huge support system and I'm able to leverage all of that around me, you know, and and do it with grace and and sometimes with ease and sometimes with tears um but when i you know when you really say you know i'm doing this for the people you just you just put your ego aside sometimes you have to put away how you feel or if you're tired you just have to get the job done yes yes i agree with you oh my goodness i have a picture up of you with your boys and i want to highlight that so everybody can see it nice and big. I want to congratulate you and your ex-husband on doing such a great job. These boys are delightful in pictures. I can only imagine what they're like in person. So congratulations yeah, on that. They are, they're just, they're gorgeous. But oh, I mean, thank they're you. <laughs> they're, they're sweethearts. They really are. They're boys though, 100%. Oh my goodness. <laughs> totally different world. Oh my. I had three girls and then two boys and God <laughs> He had to kind of ease me into it before, like, just giving me these boys. Um, it's a totally different world. So now let's go into Single Moms Award. Is that right? Single Moms Award. Awards, yes. Awards. And this is held each year. 
Um, yes. seven years. My mind is still stuck on seven years. I can't believe you started this seven years ago. This is just divine intervention, right? And a wonderful, beautiful woman who has so many other wonderful, beautiful women working with you that have ears to listen and to hear what your community needs. And I, I'm just so excited about this, but tell me a little bit about the awards that happens annually. However, COVID stepped in the way. So you did not have it last year, nor this year, but it is coming. Definitely. We are actually already planning for next year. We're having it uh, May 4th, 2022. And this will be our sixth annual award show, right? So we'll be going into our sixth annual award show. And this event is all about honoring a community of single mom business owners, leaders, entrepreneurs, and supporters. And so we, uh, we're we going to be holding it in Los Angeles. And it's going to be a gala, a dinner, black tie. Uh, we're going to have a celebrity kids fashion show, red carpet, awards dinner, and um, lots of great sponsors, lots of great women that we honor every year. So we're really excited about it. So who are some of the women that have won in past years? Yes. Yeah, so we uh, recently honored uh, Tosca Musk. Tosca Musk is actually Iman Musk's sister. And she's a single mom of two. She has a little boy and a little girl. And so we uh, honored her as our visionary of the year. Uh, we've honored uh, Maite Garcia. Maite Garcia is Prince's ex-wife and she actually adopted her little daughter. And uh, we were able to honor her. And she also has a uh, adoption agency for pets. And so we were able to highlight that as well, which was great. Uh, we've also honored Anastasia Soiree, who is the CEO and founder of um, Anastasia of Beverly Hills. She's a self-made billionaire. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those are some of the women that we've honored, as well as Garcelle Bouvier, who is, uh, you know, she's a TV host. She's an actress, philanthropist. Um, and so those are some of the women that you may know by name. But we also honor quite a few women who run startup companies that went from like three dollars in their pocket to 20 million dollars a year right? right so we really want to highlight the women that um you would not know exist because the media is probably not covering them or even really sharing their story and so we really kind of we do our research quite a bit of research <laughs> um, and then we always honor a man of the year and so we honor a man of the year they would need to have been raised by a single mother and they would need to also have some type of goodwill in the community, um, working for a, a you know a company or an organization that really does give back and that has something to do with family. And so we always love to highlight our, our the the men that uh, single mothers are raising as well, just to kind of show you know what single mothers are capable of and you know how the the good things that we do on this planet. Right. And how can we acquire tickets for May fourth, twenty twenty two? Yes. So we actually have tickets for sale on our website. So when you go to our website, there is a button that actually says awards. Um, you can see it. It says awards gala and you can definitely purchase a ticket. You can uh, learn how about becoming a sponsor as well. And uh, that we usually have about 250 seats available. We won't have over that because of I think that we'll be pretty good with the pandemic next year, but we're still not going to go all the way to capacity just in case, just to give it some breath. Uh, and so we're really excited. But yeah, we already have tickets for sale. We, we're talking about sponsorships right now. So if anyone's interested and even if you don't physically want to come or you can't come, you can always donate tickets to single moms. We always have a single mom table uh, for single moms who may not be able to afford to attend. And uh, we give scholarships as well to single moms and we do uh, continuing education for them. Wow, that is amazing. Congratulations on everything that you're doing with Thank Single Mom's Planet. Now I'd like to flip the script a little bit as we say. Um, okay. You have another company and it, it kind of fits, like it kind of fits really well hand in glove here. This is a digital marketing company called Elevated Strategist. Tell me a little bit about uh, when was that one started up and what exactly do you do with Elevated Strategist? Definitely. So I've been in the world of marketing and media and PR for about 10 years now and also events. So I help produce events as well. And when the pandemic happened, I always wanted to have something online, like an online business structure. And it was great, you know, sad of why we got here, 
but it was great because it gave me the opportunity to just take a seat and really strategize and say, okay, what do I want to create? What do I love doing the most? And what I love doing is helping people become media trained. And so my elevated strategist is really about strategizing around your media career. Um, you know, we coach athletes, we coach executives, we coach entrepreneurs and really getting their voice and their message out. So we work with authors um, who may be doing a media run and we really just help you cultivate your message, cultivate your brand. And we work with a lot of coaches as well. So coaches, they may be really great, maybe inside of their Facebook group or in their private setting or one on one calls. But when it comes to becoming that expert or that number one authority in their field, they're a little bit shaky on that. So we really help um, entrepreneurs and executives really go out there, know their story, know their voice and reclaim their message right about their brand and their business. And so uh, that was really how we got started with that business. And I absolutely love it. I still have, you know, uh, some one on one clients that I work with. And then I also have a group. So we have a mastermind. There's about 15 women in that mastermind that come into that group and they're able to really help recraft and build their brand. Uh, we cover things such as mindset, media strategy, uh, really media coaching as well. Uh, and it, and it's, uh, it's a year long program. So it's really exciting. So I see here that you're a motivational speaker, um, your business coach. And between the two of those, do you speak a lot or do you help a lot of women get their foot in the door? Do you find it to still be a struggle to be a woman in the entrepreneurial space? So I think the number one, if we would call it a struggle or the number one constraint I would say that is present for women in business, right? And so I, I do work with men, but in this particular mastermind group, it's all women. Um, but when we get into the mindset of the of the female entrepreneur, I think it's just a stripping away. So that's why one of our number one things that we go to first is mindset and sales, mm -hmm. right? So we can have the right mindset, but if we're not able to ask for the sale and close the sale, then we're not making any money. Um, and then just the money conversation in general, uh, we notice that women as a whole are not that comfortable speaking about money or money conversations or money making conversations or just saying, I like money and I like a lot of it. And you need to have some money in order to be in my space, in order to be in my energy, because I don't like having conversations of lack and I don't know how to vibrate at that level. Right. And so we really give women the space to have these conversations. And I think that that's the number one thing that a lot of times holds us back in the entrepreneurial space or even in the corporate space is we walk into an interview and instead of saying, I know how much I need to be paid in order to take on this position, we're asking the person, what do they want to pay us? Mm. Right. Where you'll have a man that'll come into the situation. He's already calculated out his worth. And he knows exactly how much he wants to be paid and he's going to ask for it. Right. And so we teach negotiating, ne negotiating skills, even just the sales call of just when you say your price, be quiet. Let the breath be there. You know, don't feel like you have to hop right into it and start to justify why you said that number. Right. And the first thing that we do when we work with our clients is like whatever you're charging, double it because you're charging too low. We already know you are. We don't even we don't even need to know what the price is that you charge, <laughs> because more than likely you just you come up with this justification as to how you even arrived at that number. And the justification is usually built in lack or is built in something that is not a whole and complete person of who we're going to help you become. Wow. I hope everybody just heard that because that was powerful coaching that you just did right there. And I agree with you. You know, I learned a long time ago. I can't remember exactly who it was. It may have actually been my first husband who taught me about the numbers game of saying the first person to speak numbers loses. Yes. And don't ever, you know, defend your purpose of why you're asking for what you're asking for. And then when we got divorced, thankfully it was amicable. But of course, I went back into the workplace and I did my numbers and I said, OK, for me to support myself with my two girls, this is what I have to make. And I went into a job and I had two weeks that I could afford to temp before they had to hire me on. 
So I just went in there and I said, listen, I'm the best that you have. This is what I need. And they found a way and paid me that. Nobody at that job position was ever, they had to reclassify the position, but it works, right? Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> With the pandemic at hand, have you noticed that the shutdown has impacted your work or has it blown it up exponentially and you have so much more because people can connect with you remotely and everybody's trying to like, you know, how can I widen the horizons because I have more thinking time for myself? I think it's been a, a, an amazing arena for you to go out there and find the niche that you want to dominate and take it over. I think it's the perfect time for it. Um, it's also people are okay with Zoom meetings. You don't have to get in your car and get dressed. People are okay with a phone call. Um, you know, people are okay also with taking online courses, even if you don't want to actually be the one coaching every day, right? right. Even in my program, you, I really train my clients, build it the way you want your lifestyle to look right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want your lifestyle to look like? Now let's build the business. Because if you're a working mother and you build a business and then you consider your lifestyle secondary or third, you're going to be doing such a cleanup job because your clients or the people that you have as your customers, they're used to a certain level at which you operate your business. And when you start taking it away, they feel like something's missing, mm -hmm. right? Versus mm -hmm. How do I want my lifestyle to look? I don't want to work more than three days a week. And I my schedule's over at one o'clock every day. And I make breakfast in the morning for my kids. So between 8.30 and 9 a.m., I don't have any calls. I make sure that my calendar's clear, right? And your calendar is going to dictate your lifestyle. If it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist, right? It can't right. live in your head. You can't have your business inside your mind because you don't have a business because it's only inside of your mind. That means that no one else can come in and help you run that corporation, right? So out of my company, 60 to 70% of the output comes from people that I hire to coach my clients. I don't do everything myself because mm -hmm. I'm not the best at everything. I find people who are really good at exactly what it is that they do. And I know that that's what my clients need. And I hire them to deliver it versus me trying to go off and master another arena. My job is to master what I know and to dig even deeper consistently so that I'm continuously on the cutting edge of who I am, not what someone else's lane is. And so that's how I'm able to run my business. You know, I love what you said there, because I think that women tend to flip that. And, you know, they it's almost like a confusion happens. So they need someone like yourself that can just put out that roadmap and say, OK, this is how we're going to go about this. And this is how we're going to manage your time. And I have a question for you based off of guilt. Yeah. So with the women coming into the workplace, of course, that happened decades ago. But it seems like there's still so much pressure placed upon the mother of, you know, she still takes the lead within the household. She still takes the lead within the children. And now she's taking the lead within entrepreneurship or within her career to provide. So how does she balance out of guilt? So guilt is that could go so far back. That's almost like trauma work. Mm. Right. It's almost like you may need to get a trauma coach to or a, a, I don't even know if it'd be a coach, but maybe a trauma therapist. Mm -hmm. If you're really in the guilt, like you're just like, I just can't get out of my own way and I don't know how to manage it. I don't know how to figure this out within my family dynamic, mm -hmm. because at a certain point, kids don't really have a perception of time. Right. Right. My little one, I just uh, was shooting my hosting reel yesterday and I went into my luggage about two, three hours ago. And he's like, you're always going on a photo shoot. And I'm like, I'm not even going anywhere right now. Are you in a trauma? Right. Like what's happening? And he's like, oh, well, you were dressed and you were in your bag. And I'm and I'm, I'm probably 
on average, I maybe do a photo shoot or some, something in the entertainment space like three times a month. But in his mind, he sees that bag and he goes into this like panic. I'm like, you act like someone's abandoning you. Like what's going on? So you have to make sure that the people in your life, that if they're experiencing something in a reaction from you leaving or you needing to go to work, you just need to make sure that you kind of circle back to that and say, hey, what is really going on? So mom has to work, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can't just sit under you all day. That's not real, right? So right. what's happening? It's almost like you need to auto correct it in the moment and just keep going back to it. You know, don't don't take on someone else's panic attack as your own. A lot of the trauma that we experience is not even our trauma. It's someone else putting their trauma on us. And then we're taking it in and then we interpret it as if it's something that's happening to us, but it's not. And so you have to get really clear on, is this real? There's this wonderful woman named Byron Katie. And she asked that simple question when she's doing her conferences. She asked you, is it real? Is what you're saying that's actually happening in your life, is it real? Is it really happening or is it something that you made up? Right. And most of what we experience in life are things that we've made up. They're not happening. Mm -mm. Isn't that amazing? I, I, it just fascinates me how the mind works and how the mind works in differences from female to male. But we could sit here all night long talking. <laughs> about that. So I really appreciate you answering that question. Now, I would love to know. What are some of the biggest takeaways you've had from all of your endeavors from modeling to motherhood, entrepreneurial, 501c3 organization? What is your biggest takeaway that you've said, I really need to bury this and come back to it often? Wow. I would say the biggest takeaway is nurture your network. Mm. Nurture your network. Um, another thing that I would say is self-care. Self-care is huge. I know we've been having that conversation more in our community as a whole, mm -hmm. um, but it is important. And you want to build your life with self-care being a part of who you are. It shouldn't be like a thing that you do. It should just be your lifestyle. Your lifestyle should be built on taking care of yourself, working out, drinking water, um, if you need to hire a nutritionist, you know, all those things. And then the, I think the number one thing that just came to my mind, if I was to bury something is when you don't know something, hire someone that does. Oh, I love it. Don't spend one hour, 10 hours, two years Googling YouTube, asking questions. Just hire someone to get it done. And it, that's such wonderful common sense. That's just like if you had a medical problem, we go to a doctor who is degreed in a specific area mm -hmm. for a reason. For a reason. That's right. And just do it. Don't don't take a long time to make that decision. Mm. You know, it could cost you time, yes, but it can also cost you what your life was supposed to be. Mm, wow. Right. And so we take these different pathways. You know, we have all these different paths that we can take. But it could cost you so hugely that you don't even understand it. You know, when I started paying people to get me where I want to go, my life literally took off like a jet. Wow. You know, it took off like a jet. And then I was able to stay in my zone of genius versus trying to do five jobs that I had no business dwindling in. That's not mm -hmm. what I do. It's, it's just taking up all of my brain capacity is exhausting me, right? If you're exhausted, it's because you need to set aside a budget to pay folks to do things for you. Oh, I I'm so glad that I asked that question. And one final question for you is I, I know it's dinner time there in Los Angeles. So I don't <laughs> want to take too much of your time, but what can we see coming in the future and where can we look for the announcements? Oh, yes. So on my website at nefertiriplessy.com is where I do a lot of my updates. But on my Instagram, uh, my Instagram, lots of updates happen there as far as what I have going on. 
Um, I am planning on uh, doing my own TV show very soon. So I'm a TV host and I've been a TV host for years and I was able to, you know, have that beautiful experience of, you know, bringing education and life to television and film. And I also have a podcast uh, with LA Weekly. LA Weekly is here in Los Angeles, but it's a you can listen to it anywhere in the world. It's called More Hustle. And I host that podcast with the owner of LA uh, Weekly, Brian Calais. And, um, you know, would love for you guys to check that out. We interview amazing people on a weekly basis. And so we'd love for you to check that out and download it. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm putting that into the comment thread so everybody can go and check out more hustle and LA weekly and congratulations on everything that you do. And thank you so much for your time tonight. This has been an absolute pleasure. You've given me so much insight on things that I need to consider for my own life. And I, if anybody watches this interview through, through, they are just going to be amazed. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Oh my goodness, everybody. Wasn't she wonderful? I still have her contact information up on the screen. So please get in touch to, get in touch with Nefertiri Plessy. As she can be found at nefertiriplessy.com. That's N-E-F-E-R-T-E-R-I-P-L-E-S-S-Y.com. She is all over the internet if you google her and i am so thrilled that you were able to join us tonight as i always close out the show and as it comes from my heart we are blessed you are blessed and mm, uh, love you so come back next time i will see you on sunday instead of monday for our regular mondays since it is a holiday we will be spending it with family so we'll see you at 9 p.m this sunday the 30th of may have a wonderful